Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around 1 in 2 women and 1 in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean? Like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. Well, you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information about Sex with Emily, go to sexwithemily.com. We have all your sex news and information that you need and all the shows, all the podcasts you can check out there. So thanks everyone for listening. Hope you had a happy long weekend. We're glad to be back here, aren't we, Menace? I am so happy to be back. So happy to be back. I feel well rested. Do you? Yeah. After all your crazy drunken tweets? Well, we'll talk about that later. In a minute. But today's show, (laughs) how to have more sex. Also, if you want to call into the show, our number is 415-992-7392. And we've got a contest going on. What would you give up for amazing sex? So get a free toy from adamandeve.com, a uh, sexy gift. So email us, feedback at sexwithemily.com. What would you give up for amazing sex? So do that, feedback. And we've also got your emails, and some of the topics include oming, which is what we talked about a lot last week, orgasmic meditation, and how medication can affect your erection, and some swingers emails, of course, because we always got those. And, uh, yeah, that's what we got. Uh, Menace, what's up? Nothing. I mean, oh, what did you end up doing on the I weekend ended up first? Going, well, okay. So my weekend, I don't wasn't as crazy as yours. I was without email, internet, and phone for three days, which to me is like a whole... You're such a hippie. ...testament to our... Can you do it, you know? <laughs> can you... I was, like, driving up there, and all of a sudden my phone went out because it's, like, three... It's, like, two hours east of Yosemite, this cabin that we go to, and it's just, like nothing like desolate so it's kind of nice having a little text to be an email we hung out we went to the lake we swam we drank we canoed it sounds nice getting one with nature we how many people were you with five okay it was a small group how many guys like, or girls the two got three guys two girls okay okay get crazy no one was a married couple Mm-hmm. And then two of my single guy friends and oh, myself. Oh, so you and two single guys, eh? Yay. And three dogs. 
including oh, my own. That's annoying. Yeah. No, Wait, dogs no, you're... Annoying. Well, my dog, dog, I'm sure. Okay, so my ex-boyfriend has decided to co-parent my dog with me. So we're going to share the responsibilities and co-parent like every other week. I think I can do that for now. And if I can't do that for now, then we're going to get rid of the dog. I'm going to get rid of the dog. But he's kind of stepped up because he loves the dog too. So, but he's going to take it on full time. No, part time. Uh, but we're like divorced parents, and we're going to share the dog for yeah. <sighs> oh, crazy, crazy! Yeah. But it was fun. It was you know the weekend. There was no sex. It was a married couple, whatever. They maybe have had sex. I doubt they did. But um, it was just good to get away. Good to get away from the phone. I feel totally recharged and energized and ready to be back for you know September. Like can't believe it. Fall craziness going to happen this year no, I know um, I am the next few months my weekend was pretty crazy what? <laughs> I went and saw little Wayne right on Friday which was awesome I was in the fifth row and like it just his energy and happy because he was in jail for a while right <laughs> so right. he's just happy to be out right and then, I'm sure so he, he's you can tell he's totally changed up his um his way of right. doing things and then the next day I was supposed to go to this uh, electronic music festival thing and I said, ah, I'll skip it. Right? So I, I stayed home and I like, I'm going to stay home. I'm not going right. to do anything. Sure. Okay. I'm going to chill. Going to stay home. And then my friends started hitting me up. Oh, we're all going out. And then it's just more. Are you coming out? This, all Everyone the fr- wants all menace. The, all the friends started texting each other how they're going out. And they kept on bugging me and bugging me like, come on, let's go out. Let's go out. So then my buddy texts me. He's like, hey, can I come uh, to your house in the pregame? Pre-game is also different. <laughs> he it, was going to pre-game you? No, no, not pre-game me, but it's, uh, well, you know, where it can, you drink right. ahead pre-game, of time. Pre-game, I get it. Not masturbate. That's so a whole other thing, yeah. we started drinking tequila, and this people started taking their sweet time, so we're just like, we're just Getting drinking wasted. them, drinking them. And by the time I got to the, to the bar, I don't even remember really being at the bar. Awesome. And Dennis. I just like, I just, drank, right. I just drank a little bit more. Next thing I know, I was at a restaurant. And then, <laughs> Next thing you know, after you blacked uh, out and came to? It came to again. Right. I was at a restaurant for a second. And then I woke up in my bed and my friends are sleeping on my floor. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell happened? That's hilarious. So I apparently, yeah, I drank too much. And uh, we, know that. I, we went out to a bar and that was fine. And then we went out to eat after. And they said that I went to the bathroom. I come back from the bathroom and... And there is an onion ring in my mouth. Ooh, apparently, I befriended somebody and let Asked it, them for an onion ring? Yeah, and then they gave me an onion ring. And then I brought them to the table with me. And we started talking about Google+. Plus. Okay. Which was, uh, you know, that's very nerdy <laughs> of me to do. But the worst part is looking at my Twitter the next day. Right? What'd you do? Like, What'd even, you tweet? It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> It doesn't even make sense. People like I text. It's there forever. You can't yeah. delete it. You can't erase oh it. Oh my god! And then he I, texted me, but I was away. I, was, I could, didn't have. I, was, I didn't have cell service. Yeah. But. No, I didn't text you at that time. Oh. But um, I was looking at the text messages, and they just do not make sense. <laughs> <laughs> do not make sense. It happens when you drink too much. Oh my god! And I then know. one of them is just like. Every other word, F this, they can suck my dick, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> just of talking. your tweets? Can you delete them? my, oh, uh, my text, text message when I was texting back and forth. Right. Uh, oh, honey. So, Good time, so Fun so night? So embarrassing. I feel so bad the next day. I just can't even look at that kind of stuff. Oh, that's painful. Just don't go back. Don't go back. Yeah. Keep moving forward. Keep moving. Pretend yeah. it never happened. And then Sunday, I kind of just like got in a uh, blanket burrito and just like recovered all day. And watch TV. Yeah. Because love TV. I know. Well, speaking I'm, of TV. Okay, so I, I got my cable. It totally happened this morning. They came in. I have a million channels HD. He was trying to explain to me all the mm-hmm. stuff and the DVR, which you're going to come set up yeah. for me. And and I'm excited, but I'm also nervous because I haven't had TV in like 15 years or something like that. I mm-hmm. haven't had cable. I haven't watched TV. Not that I haven't watched it. I always date guys with really big TVs mm-hmm. that I'd go to their houses and consume a lot of media oftentimes i've done that but as far as my own tv watching not in a long time so i did it i got all the channels and um the only thing i was nervous about is the guy was there for like an hour right in my front room fixing mm-hmm. it up and i was in the my kitchen in the front or he's in the front whatever the back and i'm in the front and i realized that he's in my all my cords mm-hmm. and stuff and i've got my fire tv box plugged in that and I'm like, he's probably going to wonder. It says the hottest box on television. Like, yeah. it's Fire TV is FYRE TV. And it's, I've got 20,000 p- 
porn titles in this oh, set top so box. Telling everybody at work. He's like, I, so I say I should tell him because I know he's unplugging and replugging uh-huh. things. So I was like, do, what do I say? What do I say? He's not going to play. I go in there. I'm like, um, just so you know, that Fire TV box is just like 20,000 porn titles. And um, it's awesome. He's like, no, that's cool. He's like, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Whatever. Good for you. Good for you, babe. Yeah. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I have the sex talk show, Sex with Emily, mm-hmm. and I, I, I do like porn. I'm not saying I don't like porn. Mm-hmm. And anyway, he was like, whatever. Let's just get this thing done. You totally um, got caught. I got caught with all my porn. It was really funny. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm just going to go home and watch, start watching TV from now for the rest of my life. Good. I'm just going to become a junkie addict. Good. But you are going to have me set the DVR yeah. so I know what to watch. Yes. Not that I don't know what I, and I have HBO and Showtime too. That's awesome. I know you can watch everything, everything DVR, the whole thing. So um, you know, that's if very people, exciting. If anybody has recommendations for shows, because I don't, you know, I don't watch everything. Yeah, what should I watch? Feedback at sexwithemily. I'm a new watcher. I'm a new TV watcher. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. She just found television. I just never did, but now that I have to, I have to do it for work, whatever life. So um, I'm going to be doing that, and then uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, kind of a busy week. Lots of lots of birthday parties, lots of Virgos. <sighs> Literally, I have 15 friends' birthdays today. I'm not kidding you. Why? I don't know why. It's a big day, September 6th. Happy birthday to my friend Julie. A million people. You better make uh, my birthday a big deal, dude. I will. I won't blow it off for some lame ass guy this year. <laughs> okay. Like last year. You did. I had a huge blowout party. I know, but I would have hated it with all those people. Some guy. I know, but the guy. Yeah, but there was a VIP area in my at my party. Oh, would I have been, been in your so... VIP? I would have been so styled in your VIP. Yeah. But I, yeah, last year I felt really, really bad, and I'm still feeling bad, so I will be at your party this year, for sure. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's what I got. And uh I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, so they got the dog back. You know that. <laughs> I'm going to try co-parenting for a while. If that doesn't work, we're going to get rid of it. And, um, yeah, that's it. should just give it away to a listener. <laughs> feedback at sex family, why you want my dog. Oh, I have another feedback at sex family. If you want this, okay, so One Taste, as you know, on Friday, if you want the free Friday show, you check it out. We talked about One Taste and oming, orgasmic meditation, this thing I went through. They're giving on, they're giving away a turned on women's retreat, intimate conversations about women, orgasms, and life. It's in San Francisco, October 16th and the 18th at the Hilton Hotel, and they want to give it away to one of my listeners. They want to give away this whole weekend with one taste. If you're interested in it, check out Friday show. Um, email me feedback at sexwithelmy.com. Tell me why you want to win it, and uh, I'll see if you can win. That's cool. That's cool. Hey, uh, I want to ask you something. I was Please watching do. one of your new favorite shows that you'll be watching is The Kardashians uh-huh. last night. And it was all about uh, family vacation. Okay. And you have a brother, right? Yes. You have a brother. And... The whole Kardashian family was there. And then Kim Kardashian kind of has this brother who's 24 years right. old. He doesn't know what he wants to do in life. So he kind of lives at another sister's house in their mansion and kind of doesn't do anything. Right? right. So she started getting on him saying he's a loser and all this stuff. And then he starts going off and saying, well, I think you're a whore. And just like really. On the, on the, during the show? During the show. Yeah. And saying all these things. While uh, Kim Kardashian's now husband was her boyfriend at the time, uh-huh. this is his first time, like, really hanging with the whole family right? and stuff like that. He's like, can I get this annulled? Is it too late? <laughs> no, right? but Kim went to him initially and said, uh, you need to defend me and, you know, you need to say something uh, when he's talking to me like that. Right? Right. And so and one of the other s- sisters overheard. So later on. That other sister talked to Kim and said, "Hey, he's still too new to start trying to right, you know, right. He's say just trying to get the like family that. to like him. He's a yeah. And then he, sh- you know, he doesn't. You don't want uh, the brother to hate your your boyfriend automatically and stuff like that. And uh, I wanted to see what your feelings on. Yeah, but you already I, expressed. I already like, expressed. how long do you have to? I think date I somebody? would want. I think it's interesting because her thing is like, you're my man now. You got to yeah. stick up for me, but." He's just, I mean, that family can be very overwhelming, and I don't mm-hmm. think he should go in and start defending her right away. And the man said, her her man said... Um, you are a whore. <laughs> yeah, you are a whore. No. If he goes, if it was anybody else, like, they would be on Dead. the ground right, right now. Right, right, yeah. right. But it's your brother. But so it's your gotta... brother. But he he didn't have that conversation with Kim beforehand, so he went to, he went to the brother and said, hey, you know, uh, either I get an apology out of you or I'm going to beat it out of you. Basically, this guy, her her man is freaking huge. He's like 6'7". He's wow. a giant. Wow, hot. Right? Yeah. So uh, 
but then the brother said, you know, I already, I apologize to everybody. He goes, okay. I'm not apologizing to you, but I apologize the way I acted. Oh, okay, so they worked it all out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love the Kardashians. I can't wait to start watching it. Is that one of the things you're going to DVR for me? No, but so you you agree though? Like he? I agree. Jump in. What about if they're soon. like they're married now? What about and then the brother's still talking like that? How do you? Okay, let me think. I have a brother. Uh, you have a brother. And I'm married. And, yeah. the, and my brother is making fun of me. And calling you a whore. Calling me a whore. In front of your... In front of my new husband. Yeah. I, I might want my husband to stick off a little bit, but I just don't think that would ever happen. My brother would never do that. Mm. So I can't say. But I understand why he might have not wanted to come forthcoming mm-hmm. in, so soon into the, the relationship. I think I would say something, but I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to kick your yeah, ass. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm going to kick your ass. I'm like, hey, dude, chill, chill. I'd probably say like, mm-hmm. try to temper it and be like, yeah, it's not, it's not that cool. Like, let's just yeah. try to all get along here. I probably would try to be the mediator and not, I would prefer him to be the mediator and not take sides. Because mm-hmm. he's trying to have a relationship with everyone in the family. So he'd be like, okay, guys, let's just cool down here and try to cut, try to just... Mm-hmm. Bring happy place to everyone. Yeah, that's what I would do. All right. Thanks. Anything else? Anything from no. Jersey Shore? Anything you need me to? Oh, the Jersey Shore is so good. The situation. <laughs> he was gonna fight. Well, the thing is the situation, right? There is one of the characters right. on the I've show. I've seen it. Uh, there is there is a couple on the show that's uh, Sammy and Ronnie. Right. And the situation said to Sammy, the chick. Oh, yeah, Ronnie said he's going to take five chicks home and blah, blah, blah. So that pissed off Sammy. And then Ronnie found out that he said something. And then Ronnie went to go beat his ass. And then the situation started getting super crazy. And so, but Ronnie's like this big, huge buff guy, right? Right. So instead of fighting him, what he did was he thought he, it was a plaster wall, but it was really cement. And he hit his head against the cement thinking it was plaster thinking that he would break it and scare Ronnie away, but he hit it on pure cement and then knocked himself out and they had to go to the hospital. Shut up. They're such yeah. idiots. Can you watch it? It's like a train wreck. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, okay. It's awesome television. God, it sounds awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to watch it. And then the other drama is, though, the situation is claiming that he hooked up with Snooki while Snooki was with her boyfriend. Oh, just created, constantly creating drama. Yeah, and then... She's like, oh, it's not true. But there's there's episodes before that where he's in private conversations with her. And he's like, you know, we hooked up and blah, blah. So it is true. And then she, she didn't say anything when oh. he was saying that. But then when it got out in the public, she's like. Why don't they just hook up with other people, not in the house? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's part of the drama, though. Yeah. I hate, I'm over the Sammy and Ronnie fighting all the time. Oh, they're fighting all the time, but they're still together? Yeah. it's. I got to get into it. I'm going to get into that one. I okay. promise. Just because it feels so wrong. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Um, okay, we could get into some news, but first I want to tell you, I'll get to the poll after. Okay. Maybe into some news. What do you got? This is what I got for you. Okay, a French man ordered to pay ex-wife $14,000 for not having sex after marriage. So this guy, he was been, his wife, his ex-wife sued him for $14,000 because he didn't have sex with her for a period of several years. Basically, he neglected his matrimonial duties to wife Monique and niece, who sued him for 10,000 euros and took her divorce case to the court of to the ap- appeal courts. So $14,000 for not having sex for, for, for years. And we're actually going to talk by the end of the show why men don't want to have sex. We're talking about sex today, obviously. But we're going to talk about why men, some men don't want to have sex. Because it's very common that, like, you always get here that the women don't want to have sex. But it's oftentimes men don't want to have sex. Don't you think that the social stigma is like women, they never want to have sex, and men have this huge sex drive? Not always the case. We're going to talk about the reasons why men don't actually want to have sex today. But um, Because they're tired. They're tired. They're stressed. Yeah, they're over you. I don't know. Um, But we'll get into that. But 14000 bucks. do you think he should have to pay for not having sex with her? Uh, No. I mean, $14,000 is not too crazy. I know. They were married for 21 years. I just got sick of it. Yeah, I honestly, I've had girlfriends where I just get sick of the nagging, and then I just the nagging have, to have sex. You get sick of that, the nagging overall. Yeah, the nagging overall. And then Honey, I you date naggers. I just <laughs> you you date naggers. That's how you I see it. women as naggers. Like yeah. I, so we gotta date different women. Okay, having sex with other people's pool toys is a problem. We keep all these people with blow up toys. Do you realize that? 
once a week, once a few times a week, we have several news stories of people with blow up dolls. I'm just saying. So this is actually a pool toy. This guy was arrested after being discovered masturbating with a pink blow up pool toy in someone's alley in Ohio. He needs help, and please don't send him to prison, but send him somewhere to get help. He has a fascination, a fascination with plastic, says his mother, but he was having sex with it, so he's in jail now. But this is like the 16th story about someone having sex with a blow-up doll. I just don't know that it's that enjoyable. I don't get it. I don't know either. Yeah. I mean, how lifelike could it be? I don't know. It's a blow-up doll from a pool. It's not even like a... Mm-hmm. It's not even like, like a... Like a for real it's, like, it's like a raft, I think, yeah. or something. It's like a raft, a blow-up raft or something. Maybe he's like in those little drink holders they have on the raft. Still, the craziest thing I've seen is the the girl that could only get off when using a plastic hamper, like the corner of a plastic hamper. That is interesting. And she was she was married, and she would go to, she would go to the washroom and just get down with this plastic hamper. Wow. Yeah. Because this is the way it, it would hit her clitoris. Or something. Yeah, I guess so. Hot. No, people do a little bit of everything. Whatever turns them on. Mm-hmm. New Mexico police officer fired after caught on camera having sex oh, with a woman yeah. in a car hood. Did you hear this? I seen pictures of it. You saw the pictures of them having sex? God, you're good. A New Mexico state police officer has been fired after security cameras caught him having sex with a woman on the hood of a car. Surveillance photos were taken from a motion-triggered security camera, and apparently he didn't commit a crime by doing this. He was awarded an award in 2009. The Challenge Coin gave him honors, and he goes above and beyond the call of duty was what his thing Mm -hmm. was for. I bet he really does. So I, when I first saw this, I'm like, maybe he's arresting her, and then he has sex with her or something. But no, he was just having sex on his car. There's so. no problem with that. What's wrong? Who doesn't do that? Who doesn't yeah. have sex on the hood of a car? Uh, you know. Okay. KY2 Air. Are you looking at the picture? Or no, I'm checking our website. Oh, love it. KY to Air, first commercial feature lesbian couple. Have you heard about this? KY? No. They're, okay, they're... They're doing a commercial featuring a lesbian couple. KY Intense, the female arousal gel, will hit the airwaves on major networks with their very first commercial featuring a lesbian couple. Alex and Emma are seen sitting on a bed discussing the sex success, success of their relationship when the arousal gel in question is introduced, leading to fireworks and Alex comments, good purchase. Yes. It will be interesting to see which television markets will run the spot. Whose implied monogamy and implied long-term relationship normalcies deviate from the Howard Stern model of pandering straight male fantasies of lesbianism. So we'll see what happens. So the, there's fireworks running and it's this female arousal gel. I think that's uh, pretty amazing. Yeah? <laughs> Sorry. I'm a little distracted because uh, I guess we're not live on the website. And I looked right now. We are, are we not, not live on the website. So we'll keep the show going, but just uh, yeah. just email the, uh, the peeps right that now. handle that to say... Yeah, it didn't go live. Uh, okay, should I do that now? Yeah, just do it now. Okay, because why don't you we do still something? got forty minutes left. Okay, in the why show. don't you talk about something for a minute? Talk, share, 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 share. Share a story. Yeah. About a sexual encounter. Uh huh. Yes. Huh. Did you have sex this weekend? Uh, he did. He no. paused. He did. Uh, no, Who did no, you have no, sex with? I was with? thinking about a story that I was going to. Oh, talk. come on. Have you ever? Uh, no. Okay. Let me let's play a question. Have you ever had sex at a bar? Um. I don't think so. You don't think so? Maybe you're blacked out like I was. Maybe. Not yeah. at a bar, outside a bar? Inside a bar. Inside a bar. Uh, I don't think so. Don't think so. Have you? Yes. Have you ever had sex in a Mercedes? Um, in a Mercedes. Probably fooled around in a Mercedes. Why does it take you so long to answer things? Because I've had lots of sex. I don't know. I can't remember where. Okay, this one didn't go through. FML. Okay. (laughs) What? Oh, Oh, perfect. Cool. Thank you. Dear God, don't let me. I can't multitask. You think I can do the show and email? Mads can do the show and email all day long. I email, text, and talk on the computer at the same time while doing the show. Do we have anyone on the. um... Give out the phone. Well, they can't hear us because it's not live. Don't matter. Yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's this, the thing I want to talk about though is this, this KY thing is um, arousal gel for women. So you rub on your clitoris and it's supposed to get you more aroused. It's not Finally, just blue. something. That I know. I've aroused. tried this stuff though, not KYs, but other mm-hmm. kinds. And I don't really see a difference, but I'm hoping for a difference. So I'll, maybe I'll try this one. Okay. 
One sperm donor, 150 offspring. Turns out those college guys who donate sperm for the simple reason that you get mm-hmm. paid to look at porn mm-hmm. are now the unknowing fathers of an entire team's worth of babies. One donor mm-hmm. fathered 150 kids. And yes, this really does make it more likely that half sisters and half brothers might accidentally get it on. No way. Yeah, ABC's, ABC News talked to an anguished donor last year who was told that he had so many kids, hundreds, mm-hmm. that we can only use your sperm if someone orders it from, the, from out of state. That's kind of... Wouldn't they manage that better? No, they don't care. They don't care. They just want your sperm. Yeah. Because don't they pay you like 10,000 bucks for your sperm? No. That's yeah, they... like if you're giving out your eggs. Oh, okay. The sperm, they get like 100 bucks or something That's like it? that. Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. I guess there's so much of it. I'm like, I guess there's, I just did the simulation of masturbation. <laughs> okay. Uh, Michael Jackson's alleged gay lover, I Stand By My Story. Really? So his gay lover's coming out. He claims he was his gay lover, and he's trying to sabotage his credibility because Klein is afraid the man will incriminate him during some... Okay, so Jason Pfeiffer, who once worked as Klein's office manager... Wait a minute. Michael Jackson's gay lover says Dr. Arnie Klein is trying to sabotage his credibility because Klein is afraid the man will incriminate him during the Conrad Murray trial. Okay, the story is true. We had a relationship with sexual aspects, but I'm not going to make it some grand love affair. Klein himself told TMZ that Michael Jackson had a gay relationship with Jason and calling him the love of Michael's life. So, uh, but he's trying to be discredited, blah, blah, blah. Do you think Michael Jackson was gay and had a gay lover? I just want to know what you think. Is that true? Uh, I see that maybe happening. I could see that too. Mm-hmm. I could see him having a gay lover. But I think his whole sexual, sexual life was so screwed up. I know, with the young boys and the whole mm-hmm. thing and the marriage and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he, he ever had a chance to have a normal relationship with anybody. No, our normal life. Very sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can go into some emails now. Okay, what do you got? I love hearing from the people. But first, first I gotta give out our poll, as I often do. Here's our results before I get into the emails. I give out my poll daily. What? Never mind. Go ahead. The last poll was why don't you want to have sex with your partner? Ready? Here are the answers. 10% said you want someone else. 12% said you're no longer attracted to your partner. 20% 20% said you're angry about something. 24% said sex is so, has become boring. And 34%, this is really interesting, says they're overwhelmed with work. So the majority of people are not boning because they're overwhelmed with their to-do lists. And you you ladies never believe that I either. always believe, well, I'm a dude in a relationship mm-hmm. who's always overwhelmed. I get it. I mean, I'm always overwhelmed with work. But that's funny that 34%, like, it's not that your sex life is being boring. It's not that you're angry. It's that you're super stressed out with yeah. work. That and you guys just give me shit all the time. And I don't uh, the want girls it. that you date give you shit because you date the wrong women. The women that men date are like, I don't understand why you work so much. I'm like, he is a workaholic. Which part of him being a workaholic don't you understand? Can I just talk to these bitches first? Yeah, please. Seriously, Menace. I'll give him like a whole Menace break it down, like a whole tutorial. Say, listen here. Whore. Yeah, I'll save you so much time. Just bring me into that loop. The next time you get a girlfriend, I'll be like... Okay. Don't you wish that your friends could do that for you? Like have a, like a user's guide. Yeah. Like, here's all the main things. Like I went without my friend the other night. I'm I would destroy for... every guy you date. I know. I don't <laughs> want you talking to them. You are not my person of Why? choice. Why? Because you have a negative slant on it. Oh, no. I, you... I have a real slant on it. And people think that comes off negative because <laughs> I'm not going to kiss their ass. I need the person talking to my future lover to finesse situation and make my mm. negative seem positive. More I'm so. not going to wear kid gloves. <laughs> I know. You're going to be like, Emily, so listen to these last 300 shows. Okay. Here's our new poll. Go to sexwithemily.com right now and vote on this poll. Right now. What's the naughtiest piece of media you have created? A sexy text message? Dirty voicemails? Nude photos? Or a sex tape? All right. Which one's the naughtiest <laughs> that you've done? So I know you've done sex tapes. You haven't done nude photos. No. I don't know about this dirty voicemails. Do you ever leave a dirty voicemail? Hey, Hell bitch. no. Right. I don't either. So anyway, <laughs> we'll see what people do that. say. That is we'll something see. that could... Uh, you can email You can email voice messages these days. <laughs> There's I no know. way. I know. Well, no. we'll see. So people go vote on our website because it's really fun to do that. At least with text messages, you're like, oh, that's photoshopped. Right. Like, I didn't really send that. Exactly. They're crazy. Um, and you know what else is interesting? So I just want to say that a lot of people, right before I'm about to get into emails, 
But a lot of people are back from Burning Man this week, which is this oh, huge yeah. festival in the desert, and it's mm-hmm. like lots of sex and craziness and madness. And mm-hmm. I had several friends call me on the way out, girlfriends who were going without their partners saying they had a hall pass for the week. What? And I thought that was really interesting. It's this festival in the desert that happens every year with 60,000 people. Mm-hmm. People go and they get, yeah, hall passes. Well, my friend from the Midwest called me and said she'd been married to her husband for 10 years and she was distraught because she would never have a hall pass again. Like she was like, why? I have to sleep with my husband forever. And she was getting this. And I'm like, people in California are getting hall passes all over the place. Oh, you're trying to break up marriages. I'm not breaking up marriages. I'm just telling her that there's other ways to do it. I'm not saying a hall pass is the right way. But I just wanted to share that story because I thought it was interesting. Hall passes. <sighs> Hi, Emily. And Ma- what did you say? Hocus Pocus? And snake oil you're selling that it would not screw up your relationship. I think it could enhance it. Everyone wants a hall pass anyway. Why not give it to them every once in a while? Yeah. All right. Let's go. We're not going to get in that debate. Hi, Emily Menace. Love your show. Been listening for a year or so now. I am a Friends with Benefits member. My boyfriend and I were listening to your show about Oming last week and didn't quite understand what it was. After listening to Friday's episode, we get the impression that it's kind of like a rub and tug for women, mm-hmm. perhaps with a more meditative feel. What do you think? Big thanks to Menace for asking all the questions we were wondering through the interview. I try to get the answers, man. Love the show. I was getting Keep fr- up the great work. I was getting frustrated. I know Friday. you were, I even honey. had to call you. I know. Afterwards, I'm like, I'm sorry that I maybe I came off it was as like conv- a I get it. I'm, and I'm so in it. So, it I was mean, just, I, I was there. So, I get I that it seems I couldn't get straight free. effing answers. Okay, go look at Friday's <laughs> show. It, it's a free Friday. It's on the website right now. Everyone can listen to it. And I talked about my orgasmic meditation retreat where this guy massaged my clitoris, several guys. And the guy who massaged my clitoris was on the show, and Menace just kept challenging him, and, you know, it was good. Because I get it, but it's hard to explain this ethereal experience to you people. Okay. Um, But thanks, Katie, from Toronto, and thanks for being a premium member. We love our Friends with Benefits members. We love you. Love you. Thanks, everyone, for becoming a Friends with Benefits member. All you got to do is go to the website and sign up, and you get a show every day and a lot of other perks. So please do that now if you support our show and you support all the good work we're doing for sex in the world. Hi, Emily. I am 40 years old and married for 15 years. I've been with my wife for 20 years. I've been on blood pressure medication for 10 years and have never had any erection issues until recently. I can get erection fine, but keeping one for a session of sex can be difficult. I have had a physical and stress test recently, and everything came back normal. I'm a big guy. I know I need to exercise and lose some weight, but that has never been an issue. So I was wondering, what what do you guys think would be a way to go? Talk to my doc about help or try something on my own? Do cock rings work? Please help. Todd and men. Todd and Maine. P.S. Tell men he's nuts. Hand jobs can be awesome. Way better than jerking off. That's probably why you're flaccid, my friend. (laughs) <laughs> you need blow jobs, not hand jobs. Honey, hand jobs are good too. Okay. Listen. So a lot God, a lot of men with erection issues lately. How about that? Very common. Um, I would say yes, talk to your doctor. Um, your big guy, exercise has to be a huge thing. I don't know if you're taking any drugs, dr- I mean that, that all this stuff besides the blood pressure medication, these all have impact on it. But there is a lot you can do. Um yeah, cock rings do work. Um C rings. I love them. You can get one. At, you can get them at adamandeve.com and put on coupon code Emily at checkout and you get um, 50% off an item or you get three adult DVDs or you, and three adult DVDs and a free shipping and all this cool stuff. So use coupon code Emily at checkout, whatever. Get a cock ring. It's awesome. But I would talk to your doctor and I, I really would say this is, these are all the scenarios. You've done my tests. I'm not able to maintain erection. So uh, I would definitely talk to your doctor, but I think that they can help. There's also a book called The... Um, the Multi-Orgasmic Man, which is an awesome book, which talks all about this. And, and there's a lot of great exercises in there for men. You which should I, own stock in that book. You talk about it. I something. know. It's a great book. And I also went through a lot of the exercises last week during one of the shows. So I went I had extensive techniques for men to do. Because mm-hmm. it's a lot of it's in your mind, erection issues. Not that you have those issues uh, n- yet. No, not yet. But when you do, you'll know what to do. Okay. Uh, hey, Emily, great show with John and Menace about the oming practice from One Taste. This was on Friday. My wife and I have been oming for two weeks now. I ordered the materials from One Taste after the founder spoke on your show last month. My wife has really enjoyed it, and it has been a positive thing for our relationship as well. It's kind of a reset button for our interactions because of her realization that it is something I want to do just for her pleasure and that I really don't have an expectation or reciprocation of any kind. It's a nice way to let her realize that I still do care about receiving profound pleasure. 
uh, care about her receiving profound pleasure. Even after all these years and life changes together. Thus far, we've been married 24 years. Great show, guys. Keep it coming, Emily. Menace, you should really try it. Bring your roommate, but only after she moves out. <laughs> David from Marin, California. He is a premium member. I love that. I love that he ordered it from. Um, I love that he ordered it from one taste from the, this whole oming oming practice, and it's amazing. I, I've actually talked to a lot of couples who have kind of brought it into their relationship after fifteen, twenty years together, and it has been a reset button for their relationship. It's called orgasmic meditation. The organization is One mm. Taste San Francisco. I'm waiting for them to come out with an app. How to rub the clitoris? Yeah, they, they said that they're working on. One. Yeah, that's what you want the app. I think you should go take class there. They would totally take you in. Oh, I'm sure they would. But you wouldn't do it. No. That was a fun show. I liked mm-hmm. it. Okay. I wouldn't mind like reading about it, but I'm not going to be with the uh, the orgy. I'm cool. But just what I want to say is if you if you didn't get the show, like a lot of it is about the female pleasure and letting women know they don't have to reciprocate, but the man does get something out of it, which was kind of hard to articulate what it was because it's more of like a spiritual energy thing that goes to the body. I've lived in Northern oh, California for too long. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> it's hard to explain, but... But yeah, check out all those shows. Nicole Daydone was on the show, mm. D-A-E-D-O-N-E, a few months ago. She talks about her book, Slow Sex. And then John was on the show on um, yeah, Friday. Okay. Cool. Emily, I'm 32 and married eight years. No kids. I used to have a pretty strong porn addiction and one day decided to try the live cam thing. Hell yeah. <laughs> Not only has it taken away my desire to look at porn, it allowed me to actually talk to real people so as to get some confidence perspective to get out of the house and socialize with real people. This is all concealed from my wife. I admit it's not the best thing, but she's also been the benefactor since I'm in a better mood and happier. I'll spend fifty dollars a month. I'll spend fifty dollars a month on tips or private sessions, sometimes more. I have a few models that are my favorites and have become friends, or at least on close acquaintances, and we'll meet regularly online for some time together, either just to chat or have fun. In quotes, I tend to not want to have a private session with a model until I feel I've gotten to know her. I guess if I frequented strip clubs, strip clubs, I'd be the guy trying to be friends with the girl giving me a lap dance from Richard. So I guess he goes on these webcams and gets private training sessions, but I'm not sure what that means exactly. Do you know? They're called cam girls. I don't know what the private training sessions he's referring to. Maybe they have sex, like phone uh, simulated. Yeah, or maybe he asks for tips or something like that. Yeah. You can just pay 50 bucks a month for sex family. Now let me ask you this. Is that cheating since he's talking with somebody one-on-one? And he's he's not telling his wife? I mean, because I like Because porn that is like one-sided because they're just watching a video. Yeah, but now, this is a little trickier. He's like chatting with webcam girls. I have another married friend who does it all the time. He just turns on webcams and masturbates in front of these chicks. Mm-hmm. It gets them off like more than porn. It's his thing. I think it's an extension of porn. I don't think it's that wrong, to be honest, if it's helping him with his sex life and his relationship. But I wouldn't be saying that like if he, he, he says that he had a, used to have a strong porn addiction – and a lot of times we trade one addiction for another addiction. So like you quit smoking and you start like drinking more or you quit drinking and you start soaking pot or whatever it is. That's what addicts do. So I would say, is he becoming a webcam addict? Like how often are you doing this? Do you need it if you don't get it? Like, so that's what I would look at too. Is that the new extension for sexwithemily.com? What? Your, your webcam. I'm a webcam girl? Yeah. I should be a webcam girl. 50 bucks a month. Why not? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Give some what, tips. What, what, what? what? I could do that at home. Um, <laughs> sure. Okay, so I would say, uh, yeah, Richard, just monitor the situation if you think it's getting out of control. You know, I'm all for someone doing something on their own to help improve their sex life, and he says it's helping with the sex life, but I also feel like I, I'm not sure exactly what you're doing and if it would be cross lines cheating. Okay, Emily, I've recently found your podcast, and I've been working my way all through the back episodes. I didn't accidentally find it. Anyway, I don't know if the hand job debate is still raging like a bad case of herpes, but I think you just put your money where your mouth is or hand and give menace a hand job on air. Ha ha. The real purpose for my email is to ask some advice for my situation. I've been married for 15 years but now, but my wife wanted to leave me. We've been trying to save our marriage, but it never seems to really improve. I'm moving out of my own, my apartment to give a space. My parents were divorced when I was young, and I have two children, so I'm having a very hard time calling it quits. I know this is extremely simplified, but we are just prolonging the pain. But are we just prolonging the pain by trying to continue and save the marriage? We've tried counseling, but it really only seemed to make our relationship worse. worse. Our, success, our sex life has died off. Since I'm moving out on my own, I've joined Match.com. Is that a huge mistake? Thanks so much, Sean. Well... 
Your wife wants to leave you. You've been trying to save the marriage. It's not working. I don't think there's anything wrong with you joining Match. I'm happy that you're separating then if you've tried to do it. Um, of course, you're having a hard time calling it quits. You've got kids, the whole thing. But if you've really tried it, and here's the thing. When a couple says we tried therapy and they went twice, that's not trying therapy. If you are in a, a if couple and you're in a relationship and you've been together for 15 years, you need to go for months to therapy. Like you need to go every week for two to three months to try to work on the relationship. Yeah. So some couples go twice. And they're like, oh, we went. It didn't really work. I'm like, that's nothing. It's like saying you went to the gym twice and you're bummed that you're doing bulging muscles. Mm -hmm. It's like muscles for your brain and you need to go like at least 12 times, 15 times to see this therapist. But if you feel like you've done everything and you're moving on your own and you join Match, I think it's good to get out there. Sounds like it's over. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like too much that she's making the effort if she's the one that wants to leave you exactly. and it's not working out just throw it throw in the gutter and get another my friend you know throw in the gutter and get another that's sweet honey that's, i love the way you say that right no, i see what just do it man you only live one life sorry right. and if this chick's wasting your time then just go ahead and get with an i know it sounds it's easy for me to say even though you have you know two kids i'm from a child of a divorce my parents divorced when I was six years old. I know it's really hard to get out get out there in the, the scene. You're probably going to have to pay child support and do all that kind of stuff, and it's going to be a pain in the ass. But you're still going to be able to get out there and enjoy your life. Right. So go ahead life and make that Life is not over. Step. And I understand and you know what? Go get some hotter chick and make her jealous. Say, this is what you missed out on, biatch. You could do that. Now, for SMD. Your own, but I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. I totally recommend it. Yeah, medicine I sometimes recommend different things. And then you should make a sex tape and then send it to her. That's hot. Um, we can get into our sex topic now. All right. What? Nothing. You don't like my advice ever. I love your... I like... Okay, you're right. <laughs> no, I like your advice sometimes, but like go out and make a sex tape and send it to him, bitch. I am joking about that I part, know. but I'm saying throw her, throw her in the gutter and get another... Yeah, I mean, I'm it not. sounds like she's not that into making it work right now, so... Sweet. We're live back now? live, everybody. Oh, we're live now. We weren't live earlier. <laughs> but we are now. Yay! So Sweet. you can call us if you're watching, if anyone's still watching. Because we weren't live, and now we are <laughs> live. It's 415-992-7392. Okay, sweet. So last week we talked about why she does or doesn't want to have sex with you. And we talked about five reasons why she stopped having sex She's and all this stuff. And we talked about, um, this is an extension of that, uh, so reasons why she does want to have sex with you. But now we're going to talk about... How to get her to have more sex with you. If you got her to have sex... Does it cost money? Um, nope. Menace does not cost Where money. Where did you find this it holy does grail does not cost money. You don't have to go to Bloomingdale's. You don't have to buy any Gucci bags. Were you like any Indiana Jones and you went into <laughs> an Egyptian temple or something like that and you found this information? Yes, exactly. That's how I find us? my information for everybody exactly uh -huh. okay so <laughs> this is so true ready how okay. to get your partner girlfriend to have more sex with you number one snuggle don't grope so if you're in the mood you reach out and grab it this is what dudes do they're like mm. grab your breasts or they grab your crotch or whatever and they're like and let's go ass. in the mood they grab our ass and our genitals, basically. They're like grabbing mm. our genitals. And we're like, we need the warm-up. Oh, my God. Ad nauseum, right? I've said this. But it's true. So these moves don't get us hot and bothered. Like if a guy just – I can't explain it. Like if I reached out and grabbed your penis right now, you might be – that would like turn you on. Not me. Okay, a chick that you like. She just mm. walked in the door and you, she grabbed your penis. You'd be like, hot, huh, uh, right? Cool. Yeah. We're not like that. We – You grab why? my vagina, I'm why? not psyched. Because I'm not even, I'm like, what are you doing? That's like, where you want me to, about, that's where you want me to put my penis. That's where you want me to put my penis, then why can't I just. Because we're not turned on yet. It doesn't feel good. It's like, feels like sandpaper and, and awful things. Now, can you like, agree that you guys are a pain? Yes. So, so when you reach out and grab us, whatever, in general, these inept moves do not get us hot and bothered. Try hugging, kissing. Hold and squeeze our hand. Unload the dishwasher yourself. Do something nice first. I'll we want to feel connected right. to our partners in ways that don't always involve sex. And guys, sometimes they see something sexy and suddenly they're moved to sex, right? Like you see mm -hmm. something, you walk in and like let's say your girlfriend's looks sexy and you're just like you're in the mood for it. But we're just like not in that, in that mindset, right? So you, they actually have to kind of put us in the mood and make us feel sexy and sexy and sexual. 
So I should just invite a bunch of chicks over because and get them horny because I do dishes and laundry. Do you? But what yeah, about at her house? Clean. At her house? Why am I doing dishes at her house? Well, that would turn her on. No. We've had that story so many times that women say guys doing housework is sexy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe if you went to your girlfriend's house and did dishes. Bitch, um, I ain't doing your dishes. Do you I know, do my own dishes. Okay. Well, even a hug. Do you know that hug that shows that if okay. just you're hugging someone just for 30 seconds, it raises their oxytocin levels? For a woman, like if you just like, I'm a hugger. I, I know. Hug. We hug every day. Yeah. Don't we hug every day? Yeah, I'm a good hugger, Aww. aren't I? Yeah. Yeah. But like 30 seconds, it raises the oxytocin levels. It's the hormone, it's the love drug. It makes us feel like uh-huh. whatever. It makes us um, feel connected to you. So like hug us rather than grabbing our genitals. And then you can grab us. But hug okay, us first. Cool. Okay. How long? So I only have to hug you for 30 seconds and then I can touch well, your Well, I mean, a little 30 seconds, a little stroking my hair, like making me feel good, touching my arms, stuff like that. Giving too. me compliments. Sure. Oh, God. Sure. Barf. Okay. <laughs> Don't treat us like porn stars. This is not going to get you. Damn in it. Bed. I know. No We fun. want seduction and pleasure, and we just doesn't mean like we're, you're going to get that. So you got to work with them. Our brain is our largest sex organ, as I always say, mm-hmm. and we have fantasy lives that leave your porn sites in the dust. So you want to know what turns us on and what really works? Just ask us. Engage us. I was dating this guy, and he was always like, what do you want? He was always asking me, like, what do you want? What do you want right now? Like, what do you And I was always like, that's a great question. Like, what do I want? Why are you asking me? Because I will not give you the answer. No, no, no. I will. Like, it was during sex. He's like, Mm -hmm. what do you want? What do you need? Like, what? Like, Mm -hmm. it was. And a lot of times I was like, I haven't really thought about it. I'm just sort of in it. And then it gets you to think about, like, what, you know, what we want. We want the seduction and pleasure. And if you want to know what really turns on, ask us. Okay. Do one to others. Want hot sex? You have to provide us with the kind of sex we want to have. Simply put, you've got to give it as good as you get it. So if you want to use our if you want to use our mouths, we have to use yours too. And all the better, most women orgasm best from clitoral stimulation. So oral sex. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. Oral sex, a lot of most women like oral sex, helps them with um orgasm. Okay, so these are what we're talking about is the how to get your partner or girlfriend to have more sex with you, oral sex. Okay. Give us space. What? I know. It seems counterintuitive, but letting your partner have some time to herself can help her recharge. Offer to watch the kids for a few hours so she can meet a friend for coffee. Do stuff like that so she's not... We're talking about like, like a mom with kids. A lot of us find nothing sexier than a dad who's into his kids. So how come, got you, kids, how come you guys don't like being around us? What's what going mean? on with that? I'm just saying I that need we space. need some space. I need some space, man. Can I you give me some space? space? Why? Yeah. What's, what, what's this whole space needing? But thing? the space will help us desire you more, especially if you're Guys taking don't do space that, right? doing errands for me. What? I don't need space. Yes, you do. No. Menace, you're the king of space. I don't need space. You don't need if space, I, but you're working. If I working. really like you, I, I don't need space. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I like being around you. But you need space. I feel in your relationships, no? No, no, no. Like, when I actually have free time, when I have free time, I want to... Spend yeah, time with right, the but you don't often have a lot of free time. No, but uh, these people that have free time and then they don't want to hang out with each other, I think that's a little weird. Okay, I gotcha. Um, talk and listen. Spend 20 minutes connecting with your partner and listening to her talk can help her feel appreciated. For this 20 so minutes? Yeah, dude, 20 minutes is nothing. Have I a beer while you're talking. I listen to you talk for 20 minutes. <laughs> and every day you have to sit here and listen for an hour. I mean, yes, women right. want to talk. I can't tell you how many women I've heard with this same issue. They're like, he never asks how my day is. He never wants to connect. We are biologically wired that way that we need that connection with a guy. Like we want to talk about things, our day, whatever it is. That'll help us get us in the mood. Our brain is our largest sex organ. So talk to us. I love talking about that, though, uh, about how was your day. Do you? Yeah. Oh. Some guys don't. Like, I've dated guys where Mm. I know that's been the complaint. I'm like, never ask about my day. Like, I've even said to them, like, I've got this big thing coming up. I've got a Uh big day, big meeting, whatever, and nothing. Like, no ask. No, like, just doesn't doesn't listen. I I love hearing about it. Really? I'll call you every day and tell you about my day. Okay. Even though you're here for the best hour of the day. I get picked up uh, by my assistant every day. That's why I ask her, like, how was your day since I last saw you? And then she, like, breaks it down and... It's like, oh, oh, me and my at boyfriend. four in the morning, you have these conversations. Yeah, it's like, oh, me and my boyfriend ate here at this place, and my cat did this, and blah blah, blah every single day. Oh, that's cute. Does she ask about you? Yeah, she Aww. goes, you know, what do you do? I was like, oh, I went home, slept, slept <laughs> like a baby. Yeah, 
My friends are sleeping in my apartment. Okay, mm. sent out random tweets. All <laughs> right, these are some reasons why he's not having sex, okay? So a lot of men, the stigma out there or the, the stereotype is that the women are frigid. Women don't have sex. Men want sex all the time. Men are always ready to go. Women are not. However, we do get a lot of emails from people. And um, I know personally out in the world talking to a lot of friends that it's, a lot of times he doesn't want sex. Have you ever gone through a period where you just didn't want sex? Yeah, yeah. But again, they, oh, we were talking about that earlier in the show. A lot of it just it just goes down Work. to nagging. Right. Oh, nagging because she's nagging you. What is nagging. she nagging you about? Stop working so much? Yeah, just working and just – I don't like complainers, people right. complaining about things. Right. Or people that complain that why things doesn't ha- doesn't happen for them. Oh, victims. Yeah. This doesn't happen to me. They have the victim me. mentality. I hate they that. blame everyone else. Yeah. Ugh, I can't stand it. It's That's such the a worst. it's such a it's such a wimpy way of like it's such a way of deflecting of not looking at your own issues and your own yeah. self by saying like, Oh, the whole world is against me and I'm mm-hmm. a victim. It's yeah. just like so lame. I, Don't date girls like that, dude. I, I try not to. Okay, good. Sometimes it comes out though. I know. You're attracted to those women, I think. I Something am? about them. well, yeah, because no. you have this this in your mind, you have this perception or you have this you date women it seems who are naggers victims <laughs> and needy and don't give you your space and don't appreciate your work and you mm. need to start looking for women who have all their own shit going on i i try Whatever. i try who did you have just, sex with this weekend nobody lie you, don't, did, you don't remember even if you were blacked out it counts i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Okay, reasons he's not having sex. Medications. Antidepressants and, and antihypertensive hyper, blood pressure medication mm-hmm. are often the culprit when a man has a lowered interest in sexual activity. These can also cause sexual dysfunction. So you always got to check out, is he on medication? Mm-hmm. What can you do about it? We just had an email about that, blood pressure medication. Lack of sleep. When a man's in his teens or 20s, the opportunity of sex will often overwhelm the desire to sleep. This is often true when a relationship is brand new, no matter what age. Mm. But as people age, relationships age, sex can lose its compelling nature, and a good night's rest can be quite tempting. Hell yeah, bitches. So everyone's like, do you really have to have sex? (laughs) Like, I'm kind of tired. There's a good show on, blah, blah, blah. So it's lack of sleep. That's always me, though. It's never the girl that I'm with. What? She doesn't want to have sex because she's tired. She never, the girls never say that? Never say that. Because they don't have jobs. They just sit around and wait for you to come home from work. (laughs) <laughs> the girls you date are like, where's I, Menace? Where's this, Menace? They should be at home naked waiting for me if it's like that. Yeah, it's no shit, honey. I'm telling Save you, you're looking at the wrong girls. Time. Okay, her, hormonal levels. The most important physiological stimulus of sexual desire is testosterone. Many men are mistakenly sent to have a blood test for total testosterone when low libido is the issue. So too much prolactin and the sex hormone something build binding globulin can suppress sexual desire. So you have to get tested for this. So a lot of times it's your testosterone levels are all wacky. How do I get it? Do you, I get the t- yeah, you get a blood test. Do I take a pill to get more? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you do after that. You can take a pill. Okay. Testosterone or whatever. Start growing <laughs> lots of hair, more hair than usual. Um, identity issues. When men feel, this is what I always say. Mm. When men feel uncertain about the role in the world, their desire for sex can dwindle. So whenever a guy is like, uncertain about his work or he lost his job or he doesn't know what he wants to do next or he's a little confused about who he is and who he wants to be. It's like sex life is like the least important thing because I believe it goes back to evolution, evolutionary psychology, whatever, that man feels if he is not set in his work that he can't be the hunter-gatherer and he can't go out and he can't take care of a woman and so he just doesn't feel sexual because he's like all messed up in his head, you know? So when, when he's like identity issues, he has issues at work, faces the death of an important family member, becomes disheartened about a formerly held strong belief. Whatever it is, when men are like in emotional turmoil, they don't want to have sex. <laughs> what? Nothing. Why are you laughing about I'm that? Just, um, I was, I was. Are thinking, you emotionally tumultuous right now? Yeah, I'm totally. <laughs> no. You're just laughing at me for fun? Yes. Okay. Another thing is, these are reasons why he's not having sex. Turned off aspects, turned off to aspects of sex. Someone will turn away from sex rather than have sex that is not fulfilling to them. So he might be unfulfilled during his sex life. Uh, Specific things that the partner does during sex or how he experiences his partner's body, he might just kind of be turned off. He He may feel criticized and treated unfairly. It might seem like too much work to be with this woman sexually. Sometimes, And he might have sexual interests that he knows his partners don't share. What? Sometimes Sometimes it is a lot of work. I know. 
You're like, God damn it. You mean for her to have an orgasm? Yeah. Or, yeah, totally. It sucks because sometimes it won't, and then sometimes it will. It will what? And then when you're really tired, I mean, you got to keep on pushing through, fellas. Don't get me wrong. Right. But, sometimes it's, so like, it's bringing the bringing the yeah. bringing the troops, <laughs> bringing the sex toys. I know for times like that. Um, but it's funny because women can really do this. When I was with, I was with a couple recently, and she was like, "Honey." You need to start working. It was like around a bunch of people. And she's like, mm-hmm. you need to start working out more. Your arms aren't as buff as they were. Like in front of a bunch of people. Uh-huh. And I was like, God, that like, I saw him just kind yeah. of dwindle into himself, like not feeling as strong and whatever. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Stress can be a big reason why men aren't having sex. Comes in many forms, financial difficulties, personal family members, uh, illness, all that stuff. Stress. Masturbation that replaces partnered sex. There's a hot topic since the advent of the internet. It seems some researchers in the field that many men who might have sought out other sources of visual sexual stimulation have found their ways to locate sexual imagery online. For some couples, this can be a big dilemma, particularly when the viewing of the images lead to masturbation and then lead to less partnered sex. So if you're replacing masturbation for your actual sex, that's obviously going to be the reason why you're not having sex. Yeah. I, uh, and then would you, would you be upset if you found that out? If I found out that a guy was masturbating more than having sex with me. <laughs> yeah. How would you approach that? I would, well, well that just wouldn't happen to You're me. You're like, oh, that's fine. That's no, fine I'm kidding. I'm it could totally boning. happen to me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, is he addicted to porn? Like, does he, is he not happy with our sex life? Like, I would have a million questions for him. Like. What what are you getting from the porn that you're not getting from our sex um, life? And guys, they love questions. I mean, that would totally get him erect. <laughs> well, I just don't understand. Like, if I'm with a guy and all of a sudden he's like, no, 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 sorry. And then he's like on the webcam all night. I mean, yeah. that would kind of bum me out. But I would have to, you know me, I'd be mm. like, da, 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 let's break it down. Let's break yeah. it down. Okay, fear of intimacy. Some men have relationships with a romantic partner that resemble that of siblings. And so they... The contact that may experience in the relationship takes the intimacy level up so high that, it, that adding sexual intimacy feels like an overload. Sometimes if you're really super intimate, like emotionally intimate, the sexual intimacy can feel like it doesn't connect to that. Like you'd rather have emotional intimacy, not sexual intimacy. Yeah. So fear of intimacy. A lot of men have fear of intimacy. I used to date those guys a lot in my 20s. I don't even understand that. But... Fear of intimacy is like fear of connecting with someone on a really deep mm-hmm. level. Emotionally sharing, opening up. Crying, sitting I think in that's circles, awesome. lighting stage. I mean, I'm not going to cry because I'm not a puss, but right. I think intimacy is <laughs> awesome. Intimacy is awesome. Yeah. But I dated a lot of guys, but because I don't think they, men are not taught how to share intimacy. Women are biologically, it's true. Like hormonally, like the way women are raised, we are we are uniquely communicators from a young age. Like they watch baby girls at like three months old. Really, they, they make eye contact with other baby girls. So boys are just like they don't. Like it's like women we. We are raised, we are born, we are created to be communicators and to be intimate. Men, are not so much. We yeah. have to teach you. And it's a bummer. So, um, yeah, do we have to go? Yeah, we're wrapping up. Okay, we can wrap up. Um, and then finally, the reason why they might have sex is difficulties functioning sexually. So if they're having erectile yeah. dysfunction, they ejaculate too soon, they're going to avoid having sex. And you get a partner. blue diamond for that one. But they can get help. What? The blue diamond. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so that's what we got. All right. Well, we're here at the Stitcher Studios, everybody. If you don't know what Stitcher is, it's an app for your phone. It's free. Download it. It's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. Thank God there's a banner right I'm behind so you. I'm so glad you could spell it. And uh, you can download the app. and All you got to do is search Sex with Emily, and you can listen uh, to the Sex with Emily yep. show on the go. You might see the sample show. That's a 20-minute show. 10 minutes. Yeah, you click on the um, the full show. You're just going to have to put your friends with benefits password right, in there and one time, yep. and it'll be cool. Cool. Okay, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to Sex with Emily. Oh, one more thing. Tomorrow's show, did I say this already? What uh, Tomorrow's show is, um, I can't find it. Forget it. Tomorrow's okay. show is going to be awesome. Thanks, everyone, Let's for listening to Sex with Emily. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.